the invitation to come. Thank you for the privilege of sharing the word. And as we commence tomorrow night, the cross is central to all we believe. The heart of Christianity is the Bible. And the heart of the Bible is the cross. And the heart of the cross is the heart of God himself. You cannot bypass the cross and get the glory. It's an impossibility. And over these nights, we're going to be looking at what the Apostle Paul had to say about the cross of Christ, about the preaching of the cross, about the power of the cross, the blood of the cross, the offense of the cross. We're living in days when you dare not offend every, anybody. Well, I'll be offending people when I preach on the cross. No other way to heaven but via the cross. And we'll be doing that tomorrow night. But tonight, let's look at some familiar verses in Luke's Gospel, chapter 12. Luke's Gospel, chapter 12. <coughs> and we take up the reading at verse number 16. This is a, a well-known story from the Word of God. Jesus is speaking a parable, and in verse 16 of Luke 12, he says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Amen. And God will bless the reading of his inspired word for his namesake. When God made the promise to Noah in Genesis chapter 8, while the earth remaineth, seed time, harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will not cease. And this certainly was not the, uh, was the experience of this farmer in Luke's Gospel, chapter 12. We often refer to this chapter as the rich farmer. Now, if there are any farmers here tonight, I know that this doesn't apply to you, for you don't have a rich farmer in Northern Ireland. Every farmer I meet keeps telling me I'm just a poor farmer. And when I, in my first church, we, we used to have a great sense of uh, fun with some of them. And I moved from the Shankill Road to the heart of County Tyrone. And when we moved to the heart of County Tyrone from the Shankill Road, we hardly knew what end of the cow you milked. <laughs> I mean, to come straight from the heart of the city to the heart of the country. And I used to keep them going, and I used to say, well, you know, the poor farmers in the church, I saw two of them driving this morning. One was in a new Mercedes, and another was in a new uh, Volvo, and it almost brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> Because I could joke with them, and we had joked. But you know, nobody works harder than a good farmer. And there's no doubt about it, when you come to Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, that this farmer was a hard-working farmer. He was a hard-working farmer. And as I read these verses, and I see what lies behind it, there are some things you can say tonight about this farmer. The first thing is this. There was a truth he didn't realize. There was a truth 
he didn't realize. If you notice in the verses we've read together, some details and some facts about the farmer, there are a few things you could say about his person, the actual man. And it says, verse 17, 18, 19, he was a selfish man. He was only interested in himself. He was looking after just himself. He was number one in many senses. Like the Pharisee was saying, I thank God I'm not like other men. Paul reminds us that one of the characteristics of the last days will be selfishness. It's one of the characteristics set out for us in Scripture. When he wrote to young Timothy in the, uh, Timothy 3, said, This know ye, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. And how true are those words? It seems to be we're living in a society where it's every man for himself. Every man promoting himself, thinking only of himself. You know, there used to be in our, our church years ago <coughs> a couple of men I can tell you tonight because they're both gone. And uh, one of them was speaking one night, and after the service was over, this other old man was walking down, and when he got to the door, he shook him by the hand, and he said, you know what? That would have been a good service if you had left yourself at home. <laughs> because all he did in the pulpit was speak about himself himself. So when we look at this man tonight, we're looking at a man who only thought about himself. Not only do you see his person, but you see his plans. Because the plan was one of expansion. It was a plan bigger and better. And we're living in an age when that seems to be also the thing. You know, the psalmist, when he was writing in the Psalms, he says, when I looked at the prosperity of the wicked, they don't seem to be having the trouble I'm having. They're prospering. They're not plagued like other men. They're full of pride. Their eyes are standing out with fatness. They are corrupt. They set their mouth against heaven and their tongue walketh throughout the earth. You see, all he could see, he looks at the prosperity of the wicked. He sees them sitting out. The eyes are sitting out with fatness. He sees his prosperity. And in his own heart, he thinks, about expansion. I'm going to be like the man down the road. Expansion? He only thought of expansion. The major problem with this man's plans was this. He had no time and no place for God in his plans. How true is that? We live in a society that has forgotten God. We live in a society that doesn't even want to be reminded about God. We're living in a society and if I could use the expression, they've thrown God overboard. I don't really need God. I'm doing well without God. 
I'm prospering. I'm living well. I've got all that I need. Why would I turn to God? Why? You can see his plan. He had planned for his future without fitting God in. Plan for his future. Look at his pleasure. What does he say in verse 19? He says, And I will say to my soul, Thou was much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. See what his pleasures are? He says, I don't need God. I am planning for a life of pleasure. I don't really need God. I can live without God. You'd almost think that these words were written for our day because we're reminded again that in these last days in which we find ourselves that they are described in Scripture as days that would be like the days of Lot and days that would be like the days of Noah. And we don't need to expand on those expressions tonight. My society is pushing Lot sodomy as quick as they can before our very eyes in the days in which we're living. Days of Lot, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage. My what days we're living in. Days of pleasure. Days of pleasure. Some time ago, I was speaking to a man who was involved in missionary work into China. He said, the government has changed its policy with regards to Christians because they have discovered that Christians grow more under oppression. And the more they have suffered, the quicker they have increased. The new policy is get them money in their hands because if we can get them interested in making money, they will not be looking for God. A powerful statement. If we can get them interested in money, they will not be looking for God. This man, with all his plans, stands overlooking. You can almost see him standing, leaning over the gate. And he's looking over all his ground. And within his heart, he's saying, this is all mine. This is all mine. And when he looks over it and he sees it's all mine. And then he says, here's what I'm going to do. And as he stands there looking over the ground, he doesn't realize it's his last day on earth. He doesn't know that before the midnight hour, He's going to be in eternity. Here's a truth he didn't realize. He didn't realize that before the midnight hour was struck, he was going to leave it all and find himself in eternity. There was a truth he didn't realize. It was his last day on earth, and he didn't realize it. God only knows this could be your last night in Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle. God only knows this could be your last meeting, your last opportunity, because before the midnight hour, you could be in eternity. It can happen to the young. It can happen to the middle age, happen to the old, but we don't know when. 
So there's a truth he didn't realize. The second thing that you can see when you read about this rich farmer is there was a future that didn't materialize. God shattered his plans. God shattered his plans. His plans, his hopes, his dreams, they were, sh they were shattered because there was an appointment he had to keep. You see, there was an appointment God had already made. an appointment that was far greater than his plans and his future. His life of ease, his life of pleasure, his life of expansion, God was about to shatter this man's dreams. God was about to shatter them. And you and God only know when you will reach the boundary because it is appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment remember in the book of Job in the book of Job in the 14th chapter Job takes us on a journey it's a journey which begins in the cradle and takes us right through the grave. And he describes man from his birth right through to his death. Man that is born of woman. He grows up in the blossom. He blossoms like a flower, but just for a short time. I mean, how often do we see a flower in bloom? Doesn't last that long. Doesn't last that long. And then it's cut down. And then he says, when he comes, he grows up like the flower. And then he speaks about the boundary. And he goes on, just as God has set a boundary to the sea, God has set a boundary to your life and to mine. God has set the boundary. And when you reach the boundary, you will keep your appointment with God. Once you reach the boundary, you don't know when the boundary is. God does. And for this farmer, the boundary had been set. He had his plans made. But God said, I'm going to shatter your plans. This is your last day. Your last day on earth. You know, the psalmist again described people who give the impression that they are going to be here forever. I mean, this is the way we live our lives. The way we live on a daily basis, you'd think we were never going to leave this land or this life. Think our, our, our time. It's forever. And God steps in and he says, no, I'm going to shatter your plans. I have the boundary set to your life. And when you reach the boundary, I will shatter your plans and eternity await you. You're not going to be here forever. Remember the prophet Amos? Amos wrote to the people during times of material blessings, in times of peace and prosperity. But they were also times of spiritual decline. And five times God sought to speak to them. He sought through famine. He sought through drought. 
He saw it through crop failure. He, he saw it through pestilence. And then God says after five times, you will not return unto me. Therefore, prepare to meet your God. Prepare to meet your God. You see, a man is a fool when he substitutes material blessings in spite of God's eternal salvation. God calls that man a fool. A fool. Here tonight, God has set a boundary. You may be just one step away from the boundary. You may be just one breath away from the boundary. And God could interrupt and shatter your plans. One phone call could make the difference. I remember the night when I, I took the phone call from my sister-in-law my wife's sister, to say that her husband of 23 had just been killed. I tell you, friends, your plans can be shattered by one phone call. God can shatter your plans. The third thing here not only the truth he didn't realize, it was his last day on earth, and he didn't realize it. Not only that the future that didn't materialize, God interrupted and shattered the plans that he had made. But there was a future he didn't visualize. A future he didn't visualize. For God says, this night, thy soul shall be required of thee. This night, thy soul shall be required of thee. God says, you're going to hit the boundary. Your body will be buried in the earth. Your soul will have, will have already left your body and out into eternity. Try to visualize in your mind tonight. God himself says, What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. You cannot, you cannot live without God and die with God. I'll say it again. You cannot live without God and die with God. You cannot expect to spend your life on earth without God and then expect to spend eternity with God. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And this man realized that before the midnight hour, he would lift his eyes in eternity. Before ever the first tear could be shed or the first word of sorrow could be spoken, his soul would have been in a lost eternity. He never visualized a future like this. My, if only he had have known, if only he had have known 
if only someone had told him. He didn't need to go to a lost eternity, for God had made a way of escape. That's why God sent His Son into the world. That's why the cross of Jesus Christ is so important. That's why we preach and sing so much about the blood of Christ, because nothing can forgive your sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. I can't do it. The pastor can't do it. <coughs> Once when I was away and uh, they had uh, put this advert in the, in the paper or in the paper in the country I was in and they had my photograph on the, uh, on the front of the paper and someone sent it to us. And it said, Aris Priest visits South Africa. And my photograph was there. And I thought it's a good job that journalism knows nothing about the Shankill Road. Or she wouldn't have that statement beside me. Aris Priest visits Johannesburg Church. I told him at Bally Key that from now on I want you to call me Father. And on Friday morning I'll be listening to confessions at 10 pound a time. But it wouldn't matter how much they would confess. I couldn't cleanse them from their sin. I couldn't pardon them for their iniquity. I couldn't do it. The only thing that can cleanse you from your sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why God sent his son that's, that's why they nailed him to a cross. That's why he suffered such agony and shame on that cross. And all oh, we could see it tonight, if we could just get a glimpse into that lost eternity tonight and hear the man whose plans were shattered, the cry would come back, somebody tell my friends about Jesus. Somebody tell them about the cross. Somebody tell them about the love of God, the concern in his soul. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And God has sent me here tonight to tell you, God loves you. He really loves you. God cares for you. He really cares for you. And God does not want to shatter your plans without giving you the opportunity to make your peace with God. How can I do that? I can do it by coming as a sinner to the Savior. I can do it by acknowledging I have sinned. My sin has separated me from my God. But tonight, I don't want to reach the boundary in my sin. I want to be ready for eternity. And I want to meet Jesus on a simple faith in repentance coming to the foot of that cross and embracing Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord that can make all the difference in your life and your eternal destiny a truth he didn't realize. His last day, his last opportunity, a future that didn't materialize, God stepped in and shattered his plans. An eternity he didn't visualize. He didn't visualize 
And before the midnight hour, he would lift his eyes in a lost eternity. And God gives you one more chance tonight just to come. Just to make your peace with him. Just to prepare for the great eternity. He would have says, when he goes, then whose shall these things be? Well, the one that's coming behind you, scatter them. You'll have no control over it. And God says, be wise. Be sure. And be saved for all eternity. May God bless you. We can talk to you tonight. We'd love to talk to you. Help you to find the Savior even tonight. We're going to 